Rye, are you on? I see that you're recording. Okay, but I can't hear you. So first we have the antitrust policy notice that hopefully the majority of y'all are already familiar with. And then we have the inclusion about all are welcome into the hyperledger community. So <clears throat> we don't have a huge amount to do for today, so it's probably a good time for dance light to be uh, having to be rescheduled. The main thing that I would like for you all to go and look at in regards to the announcements is the link to the CICD homepage. So we've created a section and we've made most of it public. Um, there's a couple things that um, the committee members um, don't want to be made public, which is basically how much everybody's CICD costs, et cetera. So if you'd like to join that committee to see those numbers, um, please contact Dave Hughesby so that um, you can see that, but you can still see a lot of the process that's been made. Um, I'd also like to point out the fact that there's a new supply chain um, SIG that's getting started right now. Uh, they do have a um, space up on the wiki and the other portions set up. I have it, they haven't gotten back yet with the date and time for when they're meeting, but um, that's also up. And we're also looking for volunteers to participate in a new fabric developer certification workshop that's happening in July here at the LF. So if you'd like to participate, also let me know so that I can get you, send you the link to the form for signing up. Are there any questions? Okay. The next one is for discussions. Um, one of the things that uh, we've been talking about on the com um, community architects team is opening up a lot of the different work that we do so that everyone can kind of get a little bit more um, information about it. So we're doing something that we're calling task forces. I just call them specials to make everybody feel better. Um, <laughs> Uh, and so for that, we've got like the CICD. Um, I'm also going to be getting together another task force to talk about the contributor summit location and maybe having more than one. Um, before that, we're talking about doing a special task force so that we can help raise sponsorship monies, do some different things in regards to that, uh, figuring all those different pieces out. And then um, Raya is also doing a bunch of work um, on the DCO. Portions, so we're going to be creating that also as a special task force. So if there's any of these different things or functions that you're interested in helping us out with, please let me know. I'll be putting up a special section in the wiki so that everyone can see what we're working on and um, how all of that's progressing for each of the individual task force. So are there any questions about that? It's a little different than a work group because it is a lot of the work that <clears throat> my team ends up having to to have deadlines on and other different things that have to be finalized. But it is a way for us to open things up more so that everybody can see what we're doing. I feel like a lot of times we've been kind of operating in a little bit of a vacuum and this will make it easier for us to have some public meetings that people can join, the documentation that'll be up on the wiki so people can have some input, uh, things of that nature. This looks like a really nice idea. Um, how do people join these? I think what I'm going to do with these, Hart, is um, I'm going to be putting up a special section in the wiki, and I'm going to have them all outlined out with all of our notes and things. And then um, <clears throat> basically anybody can join. It's just making sure that I don't want to take up a bunch of so we only have so many Zoom channels and such. And so I do wanna make them public, but I don't wanna take up a lot of different space for them. So basically, if you tell me, I'll just add you to the list. And then you'll get the notifications and all that kind of stuff. But it just seems like it might be too much noise to put it up everywhere else. So um, we're trying to keep the bureaucratic overhead to a minimum. Where like, you know, like with the work groups, we have charters, we elect chairs, we do all this other different stuff. And this is like quick things that my team has to own um, for the basic working of Hyperledger. 
So I wanted to take a little bit less of the bureaucracy, but still make it open because none of these things have really been open in the past. It's like, I feel like I throw announcements at the TSC, but it's not really as transparent as I would like for it to be. So basically contacting us and I'll just have a listing of the different ones that people would like to participate on and I'll keep announcing them at the TSC as well. What do you think? Uh, that sounds good. Um, thanks. I know a lot of people have been, uh, you know, a, a lot of the, like the contributor summit, for instance, uh, a lot of, you know, the locations to many of us just seem to sort of drop out of the sky. Yeah, and a lot of that's yeah. us trying to work with events too. Um, but uh, this, and that's one reason why I was like, it would be great to have this as something like a task force because um, it doesn't work as, for me, it didn't feel like it worked as well doing the whole Japan thing because our events team couldn't find anything. And so then we were like, depending upon the members and, and people were being very kind and generous with their time, but it was just not easy to sync up on it. And this way, I feel like I can put in some more deadlines. I can talk about where we're looking at, have that conversation be public so that everybody can go and look and sit there and see. And also, to be quite honest, the doers, you know, get what they want. <laughs> so if you do go and find me a free location, find all these other, you know, find our team, all these different things, then we can actually move forward on it and move forward on it faster than I feel like we were doing previously. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense to me. Thank you. Okay, do we have anybody here from Hyperledger Grid to give the report? Andrea, I see that you're on and Sean's on. Okay, there we go. Thanks, yeah, Sean. Sean. Um, certainly answer questions about it. I think everyone's pretty much gone and looked at it now. Has everybody checked their names off of the the schedule? That looks like most people have except for Mark and Baha. Um, are there any questions in regards to the grid report? For Sean? Um, is Chris not on? Because I know he posted several questions. And it doesn't appear that he is on. Yes. Chris said he wasn't going to be able to make it. Yeah, he's not going to make it today. Yeah. You know, I don't think we have a, a clear separation between end solutions and, and templates and such. Um, I mean, or at least a clear, uh, commonly referenceable kind of understanding of the difference. So I think it's just a message to. Um, to the good community to kind of just watch for where the things that we're building that are very blockchain specific, where the things that end up being a lot about an end user solution and just try to steer more towards the former than the latter. Um, but I don't know that there's anything actionable out of that question. I would have to understand what Chris is seeing that led to his comment. Um, mm -hmm. Without him here to represent it, we can only guess. I think our, our focus is certainly on things that are re reusable. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's uh, uh, at least one uh, uh, kind of thing that we can use to guide uh, kind of what side of the fence that's on, because things that aren't reusable would definitely be more uh, kind of uh, application focused. And I mean reusable in the sense of building uh, different applications. Uh, so for example, we have the, the product uh, capability in there because all the applications that we see uh, being built on top of grid kind of need that that basic capability uh, as an example. Can you um, say a bit about what, what it means for the track and trace demo to be fully integrated? Uh, like what was it before and, and what is it now? Yeah, so we took uh, the Sawtooth uh, supply chain uh, application uh, out of uh, well, out of Sawtooth, we forked that code base and kind of split it in half. And the application parts 
uh, we put in the contrib repo for grid. So that's kind of unmaintained, not part of the platform code. So that, that serves as an example of how to use grid uh, essentially. Uh, and then we took some of the, the core track and trace ideas that are uh, reusable and integrated that into the platform, uh, like the smart contract uh, for storing the data, for example. Uh, okay, yeah, so that's in the contracts. The, yeah, so I didn't see the, the, the contract before. Um, yeah, and then like the fully integrated piece uh, uh, primarily means like integrating with Pike, which is the current identity capability within Grid. Uh, um, and there's uh, uh, schema support uh, that uh, is kind of um, inspired from the, the track and the previous um, such as supply chain work, um, but made uh, as a separate component uh, in smart contract within grid. So it's reusable between not just a track and trace uh, capability, but also product and other things. Um, uh, and so there's a, there's a lot of work in kind of um, integrating these pieces uh, together to, to form kind of that that initial um, uh, kind of grid capability. Now those contracts going to run on? They're running currently on Saber, are they? And is how is that? Where where is this going to land with respect to transact? Saber and everything. Yeah, so today uh, we're using Sawtooth uh, and deploying them in, in Saber. So um, Grid requires a, a Sawtooth network as a result. Um, so uh, Transact will support the uh, Saber transaction processor and eventually uh, Sawtooth will um, use Transact so then the current um, kind of architecture, like where we're using Sawtooth as uh, a BFT distributed database, like that'll kind of be the same. Uh, we do plan to, to try to make uh, Sawtooth more consumable into grid uh, in certain ways. Uh, and then uh, for other patterns that might not be um, uh, BFT, uh, distributed database models. We plan to use uh, Saber uh, by by using Transact directly. So, do you ultimately see the the sort of composability, the interoperability with Grid as being uh, either through Transact or through Sawtooth? Well, through Sawtooth, uh, tran Transact, and, and pri primarily. Um, because we're focused on uh, using Saber for the, the smart contracts, uh, things that can use Saber. So, uh, so for example, if we're using like Byzantine uh, fault tolerant, like uh, like shared database as like one of the things architecturally within the solution, like as long as that component can. Uh, run Sabre, we should be able to uh, have the flexibility um, to explore things that are not not sawtooth as well. Uh, but also, like, I think we're interested in other patterns that like, um, uh, where we stick to using Sabre so we can write the contracts the same way, but, but, uh, but use them in, in ways that are not uh, uh, necessarily identical to how Sawtooth works. Okay. A any other questions for Sean? Just one other comment that, um, at least an earlier version of this, I, I said uh, that there were, um, uh, as there was uh, lots of activity on the mailing list, um, but there uh, hasn't seemed to have been. I mean, there are a few messages each month. Um, I, and I know there's a, uh, a Rocket Chat channel. I can't say that I've followed the Rocket Chat channel closely, so there might be conversations there um, and um, on the calls. Uh, but uh, 
you know, the, uh, the, the mailing list feels, uh, I don't know, maybe this is natural at this point in time for the project uh, and, and devs have just chosen to, to, to focus on the chat channel. But um, I just want to make sure people feel like, you know, that <clears throat> they know how they can get plugged in to getting started with Grid and, and climbing that cur curve to becoming a, a user and a contributor and, and, and maybe even maintainer. Um, uh, it just, it, it, it felt like if the claim was, hey, the mailing list is great, um, but there's like three messages there. It was, it, actually it's not three, it was some other, some other single digit number <laughs> for, for April. Um, I just wanted to highlight that that, that seemed like a yeah, the, Certainly the um, mailing list is a, the primary method of communication for, for the team. It's, it's rocket chat. Um, in terms of like attracting uh, new contributors and uh, maintainers, that is very much on uh, all of our minds. And um, uh, I think the contributor meeting and just continuing to um, kind of strengthen our documentation in that area and making it clear uh, where people can contribute and like uh, when they come to the project, like uh, you know, some of our current thinking is, you know, making it really clear what tasks and stuff they could pick up. Um, if someone's coming to the project and saying, hey, I want to contribute, but I don't know what to do, that we have an answer for that. Um, and so that's that's one of the things that we're thinking about uh, in the next couple of weeks, like how to, how to do that, whether it's JIRA or uh, JIRA combined with, with other things or, or, or whatever it is, but like making that like um, very accessible. One of the things that I did just get is I think I finally found a contractor for doing the JIRA Confluence integration, Sean. So it sounds like when we start, um, we're going to be eating our own dog food on that, where the contractor is actually going to be tracking everything in JIRA. She's going to be posting all of the code in GitHub and doing a very clear, defined example from GitHub to JIRA to Confluence for everybody to be able to work off of, because I can't afford to have her do it for every single project. But um, that might be something that would be helpful for y'all is to sit there and see how some of those integrations can work so that it can yeah, be clear. Our, our current sticking point is to figure out how to manage our, our teams from a, a practical way uh, while uh, moving to JIRA or another like very uh, public bug tracking system because the team does you know, is involved in, uh, or parts of the team are involved in, in like uh, grid and sawtooth and transact and other things. I'm trying to, like we need some way to get kind of a unified view uh, for like subsets of the team so that they can view kind of all the work that they're, they're doing. Mm -hmm. And so I think we have a request in to uh, community architects right now to, to tr experiment and try to figure that out with JIRA. Um, we were looking at some other tools uh, as well to maybe help us with that, but I think the, the current feeling now is if we can do it with JIRA, that, that would probably be best. Yeah, I was a little confused by re your request. It sounded like you wanted to merge two JIRAs together, or you wanted one JIRA to contain them all, or that part was a little confusing, and we can take that offline. Um, but one of the things that I am looking at for that the reason for doing the JIRA to the Confluence integration is because it makes it easy to have a unified view on one page where you can actually have things like shortened roadmaps for uh, different JIRA projects all on the same Confluence page. So it makes it easier for people to go and look at. But if we are, but if uh, it's a little bit harder if we have these different JIRAs and, you know, I create a unique Confluence space for each project. So, you know, um, Grid has its own space, Transact will have its own space, Sawtooth has its own space, and unifying those across things will be a little bit awkward, but that might lead back into this project, subproject questions that we, we have on things in regards to how that might be easier to, to do that. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't think it's like, uh, I'm not concerned at all about the wiki, I don't think uh, it's, interesting from uh from from this perspective but um 
because what we're what we're trying to do basically is is say like if we have all the tasks in Jira and we do like a sprint planning session, how do we aggregate uh, as much as we can across Jira so that we can show it on a single board? That's all we want to do. So we don't really want to merge the projects at all. We just want to basically say, um, you know, for for the for for uh, the teams that are like involved in multiple projects, can we aggregate them so that when we do planning, we don't have five boards that we're dealing with? Um, and that obviously is very sensitive to like the teams. Uh, but if we can get that capability, then uh, I think we can do a lot within within Jira. Like another alternative would be to use GitHub issues and like uh, use one of that the apps. Um, that sits on top of, of GitHub and aggregates issues across repos. So that was the other thing we were looking at. Um, so, so one follow up. So on that's the reason. Sorry. Um, Go ahead, Silas. I didn't want to cut across that conversation, but not finished. Um, uh, yeah, a follow up question on. on the line around kind of integration with say grid if i wanted to use grid components down the line i mean i understand it's still kind of being spun out at the moment um but i wanted to use them in a different um way as i mentioned how much of saber would i have to integrate looking at the doc for saber it seems like you've got some fairly generic proto buff defined kind of inputs and stuff around the transaction processor uh would it be i mean I'm just wondering how, how, because the idea with Grid was that we'd have modular reusable components. And it was a bit vague the notion of how we would do that, but something to do with WASM. Um, so I'm just wondering if it, you know if we, how viable would it be to to run this run Grid components within something that wasn't Saber? Would it be so much work you'd basically have to rebuild all of Saber? Would rebuilding all of Saber be that much work if I did it in a a WASM engine, say in Burrow? Uh, well, I think like the reusability would come from the um, the API around the smart contracts, right? So um, the API, you know, Saber uh, intentionally uh, kind of followed the, the API for uh, transaction processors as an upgrade to get uh, to migrate from uh, uh, subject transaction processors into Saber. Uh, and so there's there's already precedent for being able to compile Sabre contracts uh, to a different target because all of the Sabre contracts currently you can compile to Sawtooth transaction processors as well. Uh, and that's achieved by uh, uh, config setting in, in the cargo.toml file when they're, when they're compiled, right? That changes the inputs from the Sabre SDK to the Sawtooth SDK. Um, if you, if you specify the the feature, uh, so um, so I think it's more about that API uh, and how that okay, works so than the the underlying um, underlying bits because the underlying bits can be kind of radically um, not radically different because it, semantically they have to work the same, but like um, from a implementation perspective. Clearly, the the Saber implementation is quite a bit different than the the raw transaction processor implementation. Okay, so so that would be actually my integration would probably live in Rust land. So I I compile from the from the Rust contracts, but I compile against the a WASM slash Burrow target or whatever. Yeah, that, so for for the smart contracts, I, that's true. Um, for for some of the other components uh, in Grid that that uh, applications can decide to use or not, uh, like product, for example, um, uh, you know, there's other components like smart contracts. Only one of the components, right? There's also a REST API built into the Grid daemon. There's uh, SDK code for dealing with, uh, you know, kind of writing code against. Uh, uh, what will be the product stuff, but for example, the Pike stuff has, uh, which is the uh, identity concepts that are currently there. There's SDK code so that smart contracts can use 
uh, that component and kind of integrate with um, uh, with Pike and like use it. And the same thing is true of schema, uh, where there's there's a REST API, there's a CLI component for it, uh, and they're all optional. But there's there's like a lot of um, like a component kind of has a lot of uh, pieces that all kind of work together. Um, if that makes sense. Yeah, thanks. That, that clarifies. Cheers. Okay, any other questions? Did we want to do the borough update? Because I just saw that it got posted early this morning, and I'm not sure how many people have actually read it at this point. Um, so did we want to do that check-in with not having some, I will, we'll go ahead and postpone that just to like have this be an earlier um, place to get out. Um, I, I would encourage everybody to please look at the backlog and see some of those different pieces, especially since a lot of these will probably, anything that has been assigned to my team will probably have task force. In fact, um, rai has been doing a lot with the Community Health Committee, working on diversity and inclusion portions. And so he'll um, later have a report out for that. But there are already, Rai, how many people would you say are on that committee itself? Uh, from the hyperledger side, I'd say there's about uh, half a dozen to 10 that uh, regularly attend. We've been talking about uh, merging that effort with the uh, with the chaos DNI group. Um, so that's kind of the direction we're going right now. Cool. So if y'all want to join in that and help with the report out that Rai is going to do with that, please contact Rai. And of course, Dave with the CICD. Um, report getting ready for June, but please go ahead and look at the documentation that we've already made public. Um, and anything else that um, you'd like a little bit more transparency on, please um, just ping so me on chat. Thing, the one other mm -hmm. thing I was going to say, uh, Hart put together a really nice message for the subcontracts and end of life stuff. Um, we need to queue up that discussion at some point reasonably soon. And I don't know, Hart, if you want to take ownership of leading that discussion. Um, I was actually hoping for some more comments and email. Yeah, from particularly yeah. Uh, longtime open source veterans uh, as, as kind of a sanity check on that. Um, but yes, if, if we want to have that discussion at some point, you know, sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, to help steer that, but uh, again, I would like some help from people that have that have been in the open source area a lot longer than I have. We're also getting a lot of feedback from marketing about this too, um, and so that's why I was sitting there thinking that a task force would be useful, where we could get together the people who are interested on the concept of sub projects and also the EOL for the projects with the marketing team, um, so that we can talk through it with them because. So they're also having some problems with vocabulary um, where projects and sub projects don't mean anything. And so they were looking for some better labeling, um, such as platforms, frameworks, libraries, et cetera. Um, and so I was hoping that maybe we could, um, jumping off of Hart's document and then going a little bit deeper with some of those to try to create a basic framework that we can then bring back to the group to help lead maybe a more focused discussion with an agenda. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. I think it's probably good to maybe focus first on the problems trying to be solved because it's not clear, at least to, to me, what uh, the sub projects uh, would, would actually solve or what, what problems exactly um, it would address. So I think so I, think yeah, go ahead, I, I want to be careful to not try to solve this problem or start the discussion right now. I think queuing up what the agenda would be for that working group is the business of that little working group. Um, 
So Sean, it would be great to have your, your opinion in there. Um, and Hart, I, I'm not sure I can contribute much um, based on past experience, but I'm happy to help out. If you take the lead, I will certainly help as much as I can. Right, but I guess my point is if, if the if the working groups uh, like formed to uh, with with the intent that sub projects are the right solution, uh, that seems like the wrong focus. I don't think that was the focus of Hart's email. I think the focus was to throw out some ideas and start and provoke some discussion. Yeah, it, it, I don't expect a final solution to necessarily be what I proposed. But we do have an issue with marketing and with sort of clarity around structure. Um, and, you know, I also want to let people, you know, contribute code when they want and do coding efforts. And I don't want to sit here and discuss in TSC meetings, you know, whether something should go in repo A or repo B for an hour. Um, yeah, so I'm on board with uh, participating in, in that. Awesome. Thanks. All right. Um, drop me a line in either chat or email so that I can um, make sure that everyone who wants to participate gets on the lists so that they get the um, notifications. But like I said, we will be setting up sections in the wiki too so that everybody can read off of that and we'll be announcing that in the TSC meetings as well. Um, anything else? All righty, I think that's a wrap then. Um, and everybody gets out early. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thanks.